Okay, so let's look at some examples where Plantica thinks there's actually a kind of superficial conflict between a scientific theory and religious belief. So he talks about a view uh, from Stark, and this is a kind of evolutionary psychological explanation of the origin of religious belief. And Stark says, religion involves the pursuit of non-existent ends or goods, salvation, eternal life, and the like, by way of negotiating with non-existent supernatural beings, and arises as a kind of byproduct or spandrel of the evolution of the capacity for rational thought. And Plantinga says, well, let's think of Stark's view minus some of the things that he's added into it to make it incompatible with religious belief. And he calls this Stark minus. He says, religion involves the pursuit of certain kinds of ends or goods, salvation, eternal life, and the like, by way of negotiating with alleged supernatural beings and arises as a kind of byproduct or spandrel of the evolution of the capacity for rational thought. So he says, here is basically the identical point that Stark is making, but it removes this extra scientific or non-scientific addition that Stark includes in his own theory. So Stark just takes for granted the fact that the ends or goods that religion pursues are non-existent and that the supernatural beings that religion is interested in are non-existent. And that is just something that Stark has added to his theory. There's no scientific evidence for that. What would, what would scientific evidence for that even look like? So Plantica's point here is that Stark minus does all the scientific work in exactly the way Stark wants his theory to, but it doesn't take for granted that religion is false. So he also looks at a theory from David Sloan Wilson, and Sloan Wilson says, religion consists of fictitious beliefs that became ubiquitous among human beings by way of group selection, because it's a useful form of social control that involves beliefs of a certain kind. Well, Plantinga says, again, that's one way of describing his theory, but there's also Wilson minus, which does the same work without, again, adding this extra scientific claim that the beliefs are fictitious. So you could say with Wilson, religion consists of beliefs that became ubiquitous among human beings by way of group selection because it's a useful form of social control that involves beliefs of a certain kind. So that's the exact same theory. It just hasn't added this claim that the beliefs in question are fictitious. Finally, he does the same thing with Atran. Atron says, religion is a spandrel that involves a community's costly and hard to fake commitment to a counterfactual and counterintuitive world of supernatural agents who master people's existential anxieties, such as death and deception. And Plantinga says, that is identical to Atron minus in terms of its conceptual content. Religion is a spandrel that involves a community's costly and hard to fake commitment to a world of supernatural agents who master people's existential anxieties, such as death and deception. So again, the basic point here is that this theory is only superficially in conflict with religious belief. And it's superficially in conflict with religious belief because it's added some extra thing that has no scientific basis in the evidence, but is simply a prejudice of the authors in question. They assume that the beliefs are fictitious, that the entities are non-existent, and that the beliefs involve commitments to counterfactual things, maybe, namely things that don't in fact exist. But that again is an assumption of the views, not anything that's justified by the actual scientific evidence is what Plantinga is arguing. Okay, so these theories, they do conflict with religion, Plantinga says, but in a merely superficial way. They conflict with religion in the way in which a theory that results from conjoining Newtonian physics with atheism does. That theory conflicts with religion, all right, but it certainly doesn't constitute a serious religion science conflict. So what does he mean by this? Well, his point is this, he says, look, there's a hard question that you could try to answer. Does Newtonian science conflict with religious belief? But then there's also an easy question. Does Newtonian science in conjunction with atheism conflict with religious belief? And Plantica's point is, if you bake atheism into the views, then of course they're gonna be incompatible with religious belief. 
And he's saying that's what those authors are doing. So they're saying in advance of any question about whether they conflict with religious belief, they involve beliefs in supernatural entities that don't exist, or they involve fictitious beliefs, or they involve commitments to a counterfactual world. So they're just baking atheism into the theory, but the theory themselves are in no way incompatible with theistic belief, because as Van Inwagen already said, and as Plantinga is, is arguing himself, you can easily make those explanations of the origin of religious belief compatible with a larger religious or supernaturalistic framework where God is guiding evolution and therefore has endowed us with certain early emerging cognitive tendencies that would tend to create religious beliefs. After all, doesn't God want us to have religious beliefs? So Stark defines religion as the pursuit of non-existent ends, Wilson defines religion as a set of fictitious beliefs, and Atron defines the supernatural world as counterfactual. And these moves are purely definitional. They're just sort of taking it for granted that, that religion is a priori false, and that is not consistent with scientific practice. It's not using uh, empirical evidence to generate an explanation of, of phenomena. It's assuming in advance that something is the case. And Plantica rightly points out, this is what philosophers call question begging or begging the question. They're assuming the very thing that their view is designed to impugn or call into question.